Howdy all, I'm still here, I've not disappeared off the face of the planet for, uh, for the regular viewers amongst you. Well, I can't have any regular viewers who might have been curious. Um, what are we looking at today? We are looking at IL-2 Sturmovic Cliffs of Dover. Why are we looking at that? Um, it's kind of a request video really. Uh, there was a chap, uh, Lewis, on the ATAG forums uh, who asked about um, Ed Tracker and Cliffs of Dover. Does it work? Can you give us some tips on configuring it? Um, ATAG is the Air Tactical Assault Group, it's an online community that's playing this game uh, with a mod, a Team Fusion mod, um, to improve it. Um, and yeah, they're, they're curious to see what Ed Tracker can do for them, so uh, I'm quite happy to kind of go through uh, how to configure it, or mainly how to configure Open Track, to be honest. Um, and there are some, some kind of nuances to the game which, with careful config of uh, Open Track, can really help. Um, Basically, we'll, we'll get to this in detail, but six degrees of freedom is quite important in some aspects of this game. Um, and since Ed Track is only three, de three degrees of freedom, there are a couple of little tricks you can do in Open Track to give you um, kind of a, a pseudo six degrees of freedom, if you like, uh, that, that can help in certain ways. But we'll, we'll come to that, we'll show you. Uh, it's also a good excuse for me to have a look at the game, because truth be told, I used to play a game very similar to this back in the 90s, um, back when we had dial up modems and all that kind of stuff uh, was Air Warrior 3 um, by Kesmai and we used to play that it's very similar in concept um, what is it uh, and this they are basically massively multiplayer online um, World War 2 combat flight simulators yeah so very uh, accurate um, and unforgiving uh, flight models and physics models and there is a skill curve there to, to master um, not an easy game to just jump in and enjoy um, but but you know there's a challenge there, and when you get it right, um, you know you know that you're achieving something based on you mastering a skill rather than just buying a load of bolt-on modules to your aircraft to upgrade it or some nonsense like that. You know, so um, it's nice. I'm hoping, uh, looking forward to kind of having a uh, taking it for a spin and having a look. So what I first want to do before we get into the configuration of head tracker, I just want to point out a few issues around head tracking in Cliffs of Dover and why certain aspects of six degrees of freedom are important. We'll cover that, then we'll come back to actually setting up open track and head tracker. Okay, so here we are in Cliffs of Dover. Just quickly, just want to show you the basics of head tracking and what three degrees of freedom doesn't give you. Uh, so obviously we've got our tilt, we've got our looking up and down, uh, and we've got our looking left and right. Now what three degrees of freedom doesn't give you is the ability to slide your head sideways, up, down, or zoom in and out. And a lot of pilots are uh, preferring to use that in this game, to particularly to zoom into um, uh, looking at controls down here. But also when you're looking around the, uh, the outside of your craft, uh, being able to kind of look around rather than staring at the back of your seat. So checking your six, as they say, is not really a fat lot of use here if you can't put your head round and look round the edge of this seat here, yeah? But there are ways around this, basically. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to configure Open Track, which is the uh, software here that's used, that's doing all of the conversion to track IR for us. I'm going to show you how to configure that in a slightly weird way to give you some of the benefits of six degrees of freedom without actually having six degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's stop this and we'll go back to doing some uh, configuration of Open Track. First things then is the Ed Tracker UI configuration. Now I'm using an Ed Tracker Pro. Um, the GUI looks slightly different for the Pro versus the DIY one, but but realistically you can tell what all the settings are. They're, they're, they're named pretty much identical. Also, just as a point for Pro users, uh, as of 23rd of August, you're looking at a, a sneak preview of the next version here, so it might look slightly different right now, but hopefully within a few weeks you'll uh, you'll have a UI that looks like this. So. Um, the key bits to have configured on your Ed Tracker UI is your scaling at one, pitch scaling at one, response mode at linear. If you're using Open Track, that's the, the the best advice I'd give you is have those set to one, one, and linear. Smoothing, um, you can use smoothing in the hardware or in the software. It's up to you. Um, I've got smoothing turned off in the Ed Tracker and the uh, Excel filter used in Open Track instead. But whatever is your preference. Um, otherwise, you know, we're calibrated, we're level, you, everything's sensible, um, and that's all you've got to do really in terms of the Ed Tracker config is to get those values set like that. Now we come over to Open Track, 
this is where we're going to start doing something specific for Cliffs of Dover and you'll notice I've got it set up in a profile here, a clod.ini profile because it's very specifically for this game. You'll also notice I'm using an older version of OpenTrack 2.2 uh, I couldn't get 2.3 to um, to to do to do this. Basically, the the um, the axes were misbehaving, and it was, they was getting some cross uh, cross conflict between the axes, and they were just behaving weird. Uh, I tried all sorts of combinations, but it doesn't behave the same. So I'm on 2.2. I suggest if you're doing this, you you go with that for now um, until 2.3 is fixed. So key points for open track then: uh, main tracker, joystick. Obviously, that's what head tracker pretends to be a joystick. Uh, and in settings you can choose which joystick device it's going to bind to so choose your Ed Tracker 2 or Ed Tracker Pro um, in terms of game protocol you want free track 2 and if you go into settings you want use track IR hide free track uh, filter use whatever you prefer um, your, your personal preferences I've got the Excel filter with the default set there um, <coughs> the next thing then is to set up your mapping so I'm going to start this and show you my mapping curves. So here we are. Now in options, uh, I've got your map to your, pitch to pitch, roll to roll, as you would expect. And I've had to invert a couple of them. But this is where the oddities come for Cliffs of Dover. So what I've got is the X translational um, axis. I've got bound to the your axis as well. And uh, the Z, the, the zooming in and out axis, I've got mapped to pitch to up and down. The reasons for this will become apparent. Um, one key thing to do is to turn off all this translation compensation. Yeah, enable and disable z-axis. Uncheck both of those because those will make the behavior turn a bit weird. Right, so you your um, axis, you your curve, you map that pretty much as you would normally. Uh, the main thing is to set that top point there to the limits of your real world head. So if I want that, that's kind of the limit to how I want to turn my real world head to re reflect 180 degrees in the virtual world. So you map that top point first, you get your top and your bottom set, and then you can fill the curve in at your preference. So I've got my your curve set nicely there, that's the extreme of my head movement there. Uh, pitch, same sort of thing, up and down. Uh, roll is different, roll just use one to one. Um, I don't think anybody, I've, I don't know, I've not seen any cases of people putting a, a, a ratio in there. One to one seems more natural to me. Um, now we come on to the, the clever bits of Cliffs of Dover. So on your translation movement, um, because we haven't got that with Ed Tracker, what we're, what we're telling it to do is, as I do your here, as I've got your movement, introduce a bit of translational movement as well. So it's zero at the bottom here, and then as I start going off center, it starts to ramp up. So I get to here, the limits of my, my head twist, and then it's going to try and push the head, the virtual head, across as much as it can. And that is the key thing, because in Cliffs of Dover, that's, that will effectively mean I'm doing this. I'm moving my head out to the side and looking round the canopy behind me. Um, y you can leave, if you don't use Y. And Z, uh, this is where you choose asymmetric mapping here. Click the little box, and then on the bottom one, so on the downwards move of your head, you're going to introduce a tiny little bit of zoom look. Very, very tiny. So start it off at zero, leave it at zero for a bit, and then just as you get down, ramp it up to a tiny bit of zoom. Less than 10 is fine. Um, notice the asymmetric means that as I come up, I'm not zooming on the up. So I've purposely set this top curve to not be a curve, to be a flat line of zero. Yeah. So set that like so. So I've got no zoom looking up and a little bit of zoom as I come down. And that's it. So let's take it in game and show you what that uh, achieves in Cliffs of Dover. So here we are in a slightly more relevant aircraft and you can see we've got the zoom introduced as you look down. To be honest I could have that a little bit more I think. But I can zoom on my keys as well, so that's fine. Um, uh, but more importantly, now we've got our three degrees of freedom head tracking. We can look around, but we can also look. You'll see that introduced translational movement there. Look, see, just as I'm twisting my head to the right, it's moving the head out up to the glass and looking around the plane. And actually, if I open the cockpit, I can look out even more. Yeah. 
So I can look out and see right around the plane. Whoa, close that's cold out there. There you go then guys. Uh, I hope that was useful to the guys on the AirTac forums just how to get Ed Tracker and Open Track working with Cliffs of Dover and, and work around those limitations of, of, um, of three degrees of freedom, which I think we, we've shown, you know, with a bit of careful configuration, you can cheat your way around it and you can get all of the, 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 the uh, important aspects of six degrees of freedom um, via that approach. Um, so I'll call it a day there. Any questions, fire them off down below or on the forum and uh, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Uh, see you later, see you out there. Bye.